Alright guys, welcome back to phase two of shoulder anatomy and therapeutic exercises. Um, so we finished up the last uh, lecture video talking about how the rotator cuff muscles help to hold that humeral head inside of the glenoid cavity. So it holds that glenohumeral joint together and really when you're going through dynamic movements like overhead throwing and stuff like that, um, it helps to hold that humeral head inside uh, the joint so that it doesn't move out or sublux out of that joint. <clears throat> okay, so then um, there's one more thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about in terms of um, shoulder movement, dynamic movement. Okay, and that is the scapulohumeral rhythm. Um, so... We talk about how, you know, when the when the humerus is moving, the rotator cuff has to, to hold it in place. But also when we move the humerus and we go into overhead motion like throwing, the other thing that has to happen is the scapula has to move as well. And that means that all the scapular stabilizing muscles have to move in relationship to that glenohumeral joint. Um, so if we go back and look at this picture... You could imagine if this humerus comes up overhead, the acromion of the scapula um, and even the coracoid are kind of in, in the way of certain ranges of motion. If you think about your shoulder range, you can really bring it up and around, and these bones would get in the way. So what happens is that this scapula actually moves back and forth. It rotates, um, and this helps to allow space for the humeral head to rotate um, and then when it comes back down into this anatomical position then the scapula moves back into place. So looking from the back um, <clears throat> here's the scapula of this person. So as he's bringing his arm up overhead this scapula is going to upwardly rotate this direction um, and then when he brings his arms back down, it will rotate back down. Okay, and another movement that it has is it has protraction and retraction, meaning the entire scapula slides forward on the rib cage this way. And then when he brings his arms back, it retracts back into place. Okay, so upward rotation, downward rotation, protraction, retraction. Those are two of the important movements of the scapula. There are some other small movements that it does as well, but those are the two main important ones while you're doing overhead motion. Okay, so going back over here, um, what we want to know is that the first 30 degrees of glenohumeral abduction, abduction, moving away from the midline, um, there's no movement in the scapula. Okay, so... The first 30 degrees, as he brings his arm up overhead, the scapula doesn't have to move. Then after those 30 degrees, as he brings his arm the rest of the way overhead, then the scapula has to move with the humerus as it goes through that range of motion. Okay. Um, here's a picture to help you understand. Okay, so here's the scapula in good anatomical alignment. Same with the humerus. Okay, as the humerus begins to rotate outwards 30 degrees, the scapula stays in that same position. Now over here, the humerus has rotated all the way up overhead, and look, the scapula has upwardly rotated outwards, probably about, I don't know, 40, 50 degrees outwards. Okay, so that rotation allows for the humerus to come the rest of the way overhead. Okay, so very important when we're looking at um, overhead um, athletes like pitchers and baseball players um, that we look at their scapulo hum humeral rhythm. In, or, in other words, we look at how the scapula rotates um, in correlation with the humerus. Okay, because if it doesn't, and these bones can crunch together. You get something called impingement. The tendons get stuck in the way. Um, so you can have a lot of different um, inflammatory issues that occur when this movement doesn't happen together.
Okay, so just, just remember the first 30 degrees, the humerus rotates by itself. Then after that, the scapula has to move with it for the arm to come all the way overhead. Okay, a couple ranges of motion that I wanted to talk about. Okay, um, <clears throat> so this is anatomical position, arms down at the side, palms facing forward. Okay, when you bring your arm up in front of you, in front of your chest, so that's called flexion. When you go the opposite way, driving your elbow back behind you, um, that's called extension. Okay, if you bring your arm straight out to the side here, uh, that would be called abduction, abduction, um, moving away from the midline of the body. As you bring that arm back down to your side, that's called a deduction, um, moving back towards the midline, a deduction, adduction. Um, and then there's circumduction, which is the ro rotation mo movement of the shoulder. Okay, so you can move your arm around rotating, and that would be circumduction. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So when we're talking about rehab of the shoulder, um, first thing we want to know is that just like most other joints, early mobilization is important. Um, usually when you're immobilized for a shoulder injury, you're going to be in a sling. Sometimes that sling is then binded to the body or wrapped to the body so that it doesn't move around. Um, but just the very nature of the shoulder having so much range of motion we know that um, we want to work on mobilizing it early, otherwise we risk losing that range of motion. Okay, um, so early range of motion and strengthening are good. However, obviously, depending on what your injury is or if you had surgery, you may have a certain period of time where you need to be immobilized. Okay, same as um, our other upper body Injuries, remember we want general body conditioning, okay? So what can they be doing while they're um, unable to do normal athletic activities, okay? So can they get on a bike? Can they run? Can they, uh, can they do a stair stepper or, or something, um, get in a pool to get their cardiovascular endurance going and their general body conditioning, just getting their muscles working, okay? Um, joint mobilizations work really well with the shoulder. Um, there's three different ones I want to point out in this picture. Okay, the picture A right here, they're doing a sternoclavicular um, joint mobilization, right? So she's using her thumbs to mobilize that sternoclavicular joint. Um, the sternoclavicular joint doesn't have that much range of motion. Think about your clavicle, it doesn't move that far. Um, so I would say that this is not used very often but in a physical therapy um, scenario, this definitely might be used. Um, over here in picture B, she's doing a glenohumeral joint. Actually, she might be doing the acromioclavicular joint at the edge there. Um, pictures D, E, and F are also all glenohumeral joint mobilizations. Um, and these can all always be um, helpful with regaining range of motion, especially in the shoulder in which you need a lot of range of motion. Um, it can be very helpful. Remember the S is the stabilizing hand, so she's stabilizing with this hand, she's gliding with this other hand. Um, okay, and then the other one is in picture C right here. We have a scapulothoracic joint mobilization. Okay, so she's actually mobilizing the scapula along the rib cage. Um, and nice to know in this one, you don't really have to stabilize the rib cage. If you think about it, if you move the scapula, you're not really going to move their entire rib cage unless you lift their whole body off the table. Um, so you can kind of just mobilize the scapula and know that the rib cage is held in place. Okay, so, and you can mobilize in all different kinds of directions. Like I said, that scapula upwardly rotates, it protracts, it retracts. There's a little bit of elevation and depression that ha happens in it, so all those motions can be helpful. Okay, and uh, another thing to think about is if you're working on someone who's trying to come overhead and they can't get all their overhead range of motion, um, stabilizing and doing a downward glide, right? Um, think about our 
our convex concave rule. The humeral head is convex, so the glide has to move in the opposite direction of the movement. So if the movement is upward, the glide is downward. So this is helping with um, getting abduction, getting that arm all the way overhead. But in picture C, you can also work on that, right? Um, if in abduction, the scapula also needs to upwardly rotate to open that joint space up, we can work on upwardly rotating the scapula here by doing a joint mobilization. We can work on a, a downward glide of the humeral head, and both of these um, exercises together can help to increase their uh, abduction or their shoulder range of motion. Okay. Um, the main important shoulder exercise I want to point out is the pendulum swing right here in picture A. Um, pendulum swings are great for early range of motion in the shoulder. You don't have to start with a dumbbell. Okay, She can just start with her arm hanging there. And what you do is you move your torso. And as you move your torso, that causes your arm to swing. But your swing, or sorry, your arm is just relax it's just hanging there and as you move your torso it causes your arm to swing in these circles okay and you could do you know 10 circles this direction 10 circles back the other direction okay and that can help you to start increasing that shoulder range of motion very early in the rehab process just a couple days post surgery uh, just a couple days after a dislocation, whatever, you can start to get these pendulum swings going and just relax all the muscles and get some joint range of motion going. Okay, these are some stretches. This is a, a sleeper stretch. Um, this is a pec stretch. So she's chest, uh, stretching her chest in this one. This one's stretching the, the posterior side of the shoulder capsule. Okay, but the pendulum swing is the one, main one I want you to remember. Um, and as you increase it, you can add dumbbell, add a weight to it, add how long you, you rotate it for. Okay. Um, over here, we're starting with scapular exercises. Actually, it looks like she's doing a bench press, but what she's really doing is she's trying to protract her scapula. She's rotating that scapula forward as she pushes the dumbbell up. Okay, so she's trying to push this dumbbell up with her scapula in her shoulder, not with her arm. Okay, here's a shoulder shrug, um, pretty self-explanatory. Here she's pulling the elbow straight up towards the ceiling. She's doing a scapular retraction. Okay, so she's trying to pinch her shoulder blades together in the back and drive that elbow up to the ceiling. Okay, here we have um, a, a rotator cuff in general, but... The supraspinatus is really targeted with this exercise, lifting that dumbbell straight towards the top. Um, here, another rotator cuff exercise, driving the hands towards the ceiling. Um, this is using a elastic band, a resistance band, instead of a dumbbell, but same idea. You could do either one with either a dumbbell or a resistance band. Okay, this is called a... A body blade and it shakes back and forth and causes you to do some dynamic stabilization, some proprioception. Um, you can even move through a shoulder range of motion while shaking that blade back and forth. Um, these I like to call my eyes, Y's, and T's, um, but basically you're just, it's another rotator cuff exercise driving the thumbs towards the ceiling. Here, um, driving the elbows towards the ceiling, really pinching the shoulder blades together. And here, pinching the shoulder blades together, driving the thumbs towards the ceiling. And what this is doing is just strengthening the rotator cuff in all kinds of different ranges of motion, similar to when we do overhead exercises. Okay, here we've got our more standard exercises. We have dumbbell bench press, shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, shoulder abduction, a pec fly, this is another chest exercise, external rotation with a resistance band, this is a external and internal rotation with a dumbbell, and a lat pull down. 